Hey guys, this is Eric. I'm about to talk about Proposition 15, so go ahead and stick around and join me. This might be a little long video, but I'm sure you'll enjoy it. It'll be hopefully very informative to you as you go ahead and do, uh, discuss, uh, look at your ballot, and uh, find out how you want to vote. Hello everybody, welcome back. Again, this is Eric, and uh, good to, I'm going to be talking to you. We're going to be talking about Proposition 15, that's why I titled this uh, Suicide for the Small Business. Um, whew, there's so much to unpack with this proposition, it's not even funny. Uh, proposition 15, uh, if you read the, uh, the proposition, is being billed as a way, uh, again, sorry if my children are distracting, uh, it is being billed as a way to generate revenue by making it less uh, less unfair, more fair uh, for uh, businesses to basically have their their property reassessed to current fair market value. But uh, really, they, they make a big deal in the law in several provisions to state this is not an attack on Proposition 13. I'm not going to touch residential. Going to leave it alone. Blah blah blah. But they're completely disregarding the fact, all throughout this law, that ultimately speaking, the it's <laughs> you're basically attacking small businesses. I mean, even if you read the law, it says that one of the endorsers are small businesses. And considering that premise, people are like, well, why would a small business even bother to endorse something like this that I'm saying is is a death knell to them? Well, if you consider, there's a legal definition of small business, so I, believe, I believe it's up to 500 employees or something like that. But we're talking about the mom and pops over here. Small businesses owned by mom and pops cannot afford to have massive tax hikes just because, uh, just because they want to be more fair. And the, the law itself, the, the, the wording of the proposition itself seems to be a continual refocus on, well, the big businesses, it's only targeting them. No, no, no. This, this will target all businesses. And here, let me go into my notes just to help us out. Well, the very core principle behind all of this is that the state owns your property, not you. So they are deciding, and this is what I mean by that. In effect, property tax is the state charging you rent to utilize your business. And if a, and if you refuse to pay the rent on it, say you're renting a, a house, just for example, just for you know, just to generate the image, if you are generating, um, if you are owning a property, then, and you're renting it to somebody, you still own that property. They may be living there, they may be doing whatever out of there, but you still own that property, and. By definition with this, if you are, uh, if somebody refuses to pay you that rent, you can evict them. Well, in this case, the state, through the property tax, is saying even if you own your building, they still, uh, they still inherently own it because they're going to charge you that property tax. Otherwise, if you refuse to pay that property tax, then what's going to happen? If you refuse to pay your property tax, well, then they're going to have generate liens against your property. Well, you're saying, well, I own my property, not the state. Well, then, you, if you refuse to pay the property tax, then they're, then they're going to begin removing you from that property. If you refuse to go, they'll place you under arrest. If you if if you refuse the arrest, saying, no, this is my business, this is my property, well, then ultimately speaking, then you have to uh, you're going to deal with law enforcement, and we've seen what happens whenever people refuse arrest. So I'll let your mind go where it is going to uh, going to go with that. But ultimately. This property tax is the state asserting or even increasing its claim that it owns your the property that supposedly you do that your business is in, and uh, the building that your business is in instead of you. But that's another discussion. I just figured that I'd reinforce that principle for you. So going back to my notes, going into the actual text of the law, and if you look at your screen, you'll see that it is going into the provisions of where 
the end of the poor arguments that the state is reclaiming money. Now, by definition, reclaiming means that they're going to take back money that they uh, that that it is owed to them that they already owned. Well, in the very provisions of the current law, they can only receive from you, the business owner, the small business owner, that which the law already allows them. That's they're going to say reclaiming this. That they're already they're placing a claim on your profits. They're saying, your profits are actually our money. So we're going to go ahead and reclaim those. Instead of them being your profits, and then them only to, and then the state only collecting that which is owed to them by law, they seem to think that, well, actually, because property values are increasing, you, see, you actually owe them money. So the whole point of this proposition, sorry, I use the words law and proposition interchangeably. My apologies. I, you know, it's not into law until it's actually elected, but bear with me. And uh, so, ultimately speaking, they believe that these small businesses are basically hoarding, you know, uh, hoarding their money, which they want to reclaim under, very, under the very basic tenets of this, which is obviously ridiculous. Now, for those of you who are looking at, say, all these people support it, the only people, like I said, who support this are the ones who directly benefit from it, whether it be uh, parents who are going to receive more money to the schools or to the teachers who obviously are going to look at a pay bump or even possibly uh, various businesses who uh, might want, who might enjoy the idea of relying on other sources of uh, to increase the local infrastructure and roads and whatnot. Uh, but ultimately speaking, it's really hurting them because this is that's there's a reason why I call this the suicide of the small business. And I'm going to get into the exemptions that they put out later because honestly, they're pretty ridiculous. Now, if you take a look at section. 2A of this, if you look at your screen, it has a very hypocr hypocritical statement related to the intent of the law. Now I'm going to quote it here. And to do more to encourage small businesses and startups. Well, how are you going to be encouraging the creation of small businesses and startups, the expansion of small businesses and the creation of startups, if you're increasing their tax liability? Anybody who's had any level of credible knowledge about how this works knows if you're going to increase your uh, your costs just from a sheer economic standard, if you're going to increase your costs or at the point of where profitability is outweighed by the cost, then there's no point to even start it or expanding anyways. Might as well just leave the business. So and credit, uh, expanding your tax liability, no, this is not a way to, uh, to encourage startups. So it's... That was a ridiculous statement by itself. Uh, section 2B, uh, for following along, it shows, quoting, our, competitive, our competitiveness begins with making children and their education a priority. Decades of cuts and underfunding have undermined California schools. Now, I'll uh, put a link at the bottom uh, with, if you go take a look down there, there's several resources that already show what California does with the funding that it gets from its schools. If they're already, if the schools are still bad after these years of funding, after these decades of funding from lottery sources, from bond measures, what are they doing with all that money that they have to keep on uh, getting more and more bond measures? Where's this all coming from? Are they just tapping it like they, uh, like the federal government does the Social Security? Are they just paying it off to teachers unions to increase salaries? Where's this money actually going other than actually funding the actual school? I mean, Statistically speaking, children, I believe that the statistic is uh, public school students are being paid, are uh, being charged, or uh, the cost for students like $20,000. So where's all this money going that they need another bond or another tax increase to do it? So it's pretty ridiculous. Um, continuing on, uh, in section 2D, uh, if you follow on the screen, uh, creates a basically sales pitch uh, refer referencing a redistribution of wealth from the states uh, for use in local municipal uh, projects such as road improvements, parks, and, and quote-unquote affordable uh, ha housing subsidies. Well, if you look at it, uh, former governor candidate John Cox, re uh, who made a lot of money in housing development, reinforced one thing that the problem is not, la is not lack of demand. It's not even uh, it's not even the space or even the, uh, anything else like this. The reason why we don't have affordable housing is because the state throws too much red tape at it. 
get rid of the red tape, all of a sudden housing will explode. So whenever they say this, it's basically the state creates the problem, the state tries to solve the problem with even worse laws, more hampering laws, to fix the problem that they created, which is beyond ridiculous. And then, then this begs also the question, if people really want to invest, uh, want to do this, why create a law where p people are are paying, or people are paying the state to then s decide who gets which money? Why should we force San Francisco to pay for Modesto? Why should we force uh, Sacramento to pay for San Diego? Why should we force uh, L.A. or, or um, any other uh, area up north, uh, Crescent City, to pay for, I don't know, San Diego or whatever. Why should we force these separate municipalities to be having all their tax money funneled in through the overarching infrastructure of the state and then to pay for all of these little projects when they could just simply, if there's a need, pay this, uh, pay their little municipal, uh, all their um, in local municipalities directly. So this is just the state trying to basically create this massive pile of cash that we know will not stay there and be funneled out because it never is ever. It somehow the money just always evaporates into the, the into the ether, and then we're always uh, wondering why they're asking us for more money. So there's that statement. Um, then the, uh, I actually looked this thing up because I found this interesting. The uh, CIFA or the California Educational Facilities Authority. Now, if you look on your screen, you're going to go ahead and then see that screen uh, brought up there. And that is actually an agency with California to generate, to send money off to private nonprofit educational, uh, like schools or whatnot. So the question is why does a private school need a single penny? From the uh, from the state governments, other than to what create more liability. If uh, if all of our public schools are always hurting, why is this money going through this agency to uh, to private schools? It doesn't make any sense. It's just creating more and more additional fluff that basically makes the state unaccountable for. And anyways, continuing on. Uh, Look at section 2E. Pull it up right here. It goes into a rather scandalous insinu insinuation that I'm going to quote. While virtually every other state uh, uh, assesses commercial and industrial property based on its fair market value, California allows commercial and industrial property uh, taxes to go many years, even decades, without reassessment. So, first of all, we're trying to go into a whole socialistic envy politics of why, if they're doing it, why can't we? Well, we're California, and we're the sixth largest economy out there. I mean, really? We need to compare ourselves to the other state that have an even smaller economy than ours, and we're trying to say that, well, they're doing this, why can't we? So, <laughs> I mean, that's kind of a ridiculous statement to go to anyways, but continuing on with my notes. Um, but also, the statement alone assumes that there should be some requirement for us to constantly increase our taxes as though it's somehow owed to the government uh, to give them access to more and more revenue. Like somehow, they, they just say, oh, darn it, we, we're, we're leaving these... Uh, they're trying to look at it from like a, business, like a business perspective. We're leaving all these revenue sources uh, completely blank from us. And, I mean, we're leaving all these... Re according to the government, they're leaving all these revenue sources completely untapped. Well, we, our government does not need more money. Our government needs to learn how to utilize the budgets that it's already given and needs to learn how to have an economic sense and then look at the science as they're, uh, as they're saying during this pandemic because they're destroying their own revenue sources by uh, with all these uh, businesses being shut down and they wonder where all their money is going I mean really so no that, that's a separate argument unto itself it's beyond ridiculous so, continuing on in this statement, in this statement quote, the, this unusual system is prone to abusive tax avoidance schemes. Now, what is a tax avoidance scheme in this case? Because ultimately speaking, every single, uh, the tax system is set up the way it is set up. So, if they're saying tax avoidance, basically what they're saying is that they don't like the fact that they're being limited by the current tax situation when they could be bilking you out of your profits. 
uh, by uh, by increasing the amount of uh, additional stuff. It goes into these different stuff like uh, tax avoidance or, or under assessment. Basically, it's the state disliking the fact that they cannot instantly take every last bit of money legally from you, uh, or even more, and just uh, trying to throw out the uh, the burden on you for their own mismanagement of, of their own money. So they want to reassess it and uh, basically put the blame on you as a small business for not paying out even more your quote-unquote fair share. When you're already paying out your fair share, uh, it's uh, based off the uh, legal requirements. So continuing on. Looking at my notes. Okay, in subsection H, uh, it goes into the concept of affordable housing again. Uh, it, it's kind of a, pardon me, a sick joke. Uh, since it's capitalizing on, on the idea that, of like a, the owner of a vacant property selling the property. Basically what they want to do is that they're looking, they are desiring to deliberately drive up the cost of these buildings to make it cost prohibitive to keep them, possibly uh, renting out these, pro these, uh, these properties to a profitable business. But they want to make it cost prohibitive to maintain uh, vacant buildings as they are. Uh, and make it so they can get rid of the buildings and then put in quote unquote affordable housing on this. So, I mean, thinking your way through that, it's, it's a pretty bad, uh, it's, pre it's a pretty bad misstatement that they're putting in there. It's, uh, just looking back to my notes, subsection J, if you follow me on there, on the uh, screen, uh, seeks to use the weakness of the system being proposed by this pair, by this very proposition to point to what could have happened uh, back during the current system about if uh, if a new property is reassessed it would increase the it would be cost prohibitive for the business but they're trying to do that right now with this proposition they're, they're trying to create higher costs uh, making it prohibitive for businesses to um, to uh, maintain or uh, basically all these mom and pops to maintain their business. So basically they're saying is that through the old system, if you want to make a new business, it's going to be uh, cost prohibitive. Well, that's literally what they're trying to do with this proposition is to make things cost prohibitive. So they're literally utilizing the, what they call the weaknesses of the old system, which are inherent to this proposition, to sell this proposition. So <laughs> it, it, I don't know, it, it's ridiculous. Uh, looking at subsection M, it seeks to, oh, here's the incentive, which is hilarious. I promote an incentive uh, to small business by creating a tax exemption on equipment and, f uh, and fixtures of these small businesses. Now, I mean, to me, that's like uh, honey-flavored poison. Oh, small business, you, you'll be exempted from uh, uh, from paying the uh, the tax costs of, these, of the equipment if you should want to continue on. Well... Great, I can buy equipment now, but long term I'm going to get built because the uh, the reassessment of the fair market value of the building that I'm in is potentially even higher uh, higher than the cost of the profits I'd be getting from even investing in these new equipments. So I mean, really, uh, later on in the, in the proposition, it even points out to the fact that the minimum requirement is per year about five hundred thousand uh, dollars worth of cost. But ultimately speaking, for you as a small business person you have to take a look at the amount of money you have left over from your profits to be able to reinvest in stuff. Now, even if they do make those tax exempts, there's still the cost of the, of the equipment and the fixtures they are trying to put into your business while they're taking a look at the owner of the, of the building which you're in, saying, oh, by the way, we're going to increase your costs. So, uh, I, I mean, ultimately speaking, it's not really a benefit for you guys at all. It's basically your long-term death. Hence why I call the video Suicide of the Small Business. Yes, in subsection, subsection N, which you can look at right there, it seeks to undermine the intelligence of the voter by promoting more envy politics, socialism, saying, uh, reinforcing the fact that people need to pay their fair share. Well, the, the whole concept of fair share, meaning that this person has more than I do, therefore they need to pay more because I'm being, because I'm, uh, uh, I'm being forced to pay more, and they have all these loopholes that are around there. But the loopholes themselves are available to anyone and everybody. So they're basically designing, they're trying to reinforce this level of jealousy in what other people are having to pay or not. And it's, 
it, it's continuously ridiculous uh, about on how they're always trying to force people to envy. In this case, they're pointing out large companies who uh, generate, who are able to enjoy 80% of the current tax incentives because they have all, uh, like 8% of the affected properties. But they're completely ignoring in this proposition the other, what, 92% of the, uh, the property owners who are small businesses. Uh, at least they're ignoring it in this subsection. Uh, forgetting how many of those other 90% 92% of small businesses would be forced. Anyways, they're deliberately trying to shine over or ignore the fact of how many small business owners, uh, the other people who own like the yeah, like the 92% of other buildings or renting them, and trying to basically com make you completely not even consider them in their plights as the voter. Anyways, uh, it even actually kind of funnily. Uh, references uh, Proposition 8, which is a current school funding avenue, but like I said, I'll be linking to uh, various school funding sources right now for you to consider where, where's the money that they're supposed to be getting already currently coming from, or where they're going. Where, why is it they don't have the money that they need for right now uh, for infrastructure or whatnot? Something to consider. Um, anyways, going back to my notes. Okay, it looks like that's about it for now, and hopefully this helps you out. Uh, obviously, it's a no on um, Proposition 15. Uh, help out small business by uh, by really reinforcing the fact that you are there to help them out. You're a local mom and pop, and if you uh, if you are as a small business owner want to help out schools, become an alumni, uh, become a donor of your school. Uh, go to the city and say you're willing to pay for a portion of the infrastructure of your local thing without having to uh, wait for money to come from the state whenever they decide to that your uh, municipality is you know uh, worthy of that money so yeah don't don't let the the state uh, become the the ultimate arbiter of whatever money you get so anyways I guess that's about it have a go uh, god bless and uh, make sure to subscribe and like the video if you do and uh, if you have any questions or whatever go throw them down in the comments Wait.